know if you guys can hear me. See me well. Everything's going good on Facebook. Uh, we'll have YouTube up and running, running in a minute. Connie, you are the nicest person I've ever met in my life. And I haven't even met you. One day we're, we're going to meet, Connie, you and I. Thank you. Barb, hi. Barbie, hello. Let's see if it's going to keep going. Well, hello, everybody. David Gross here with uh, Sprite. And uh, thank you for being with us, Sprite. Sprite's the real star of this. Um, such a creative uh, mind, very talented young lady. So, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna have her go to a show in the very near future. Um, and so, uh, hopefully, everything is good. If people can let yep. us know yep. if good. audio is good, um, does the YouTube stream still look good there, uh, Crystal? Yes, and um, first, I, I like to thank um, everyone. I mean, we had a lot of folks that came by last week in uh, Long Beach, California at the ISS show. Uh, amazing show. Um, Saturday was incredibly busy, almost overwhelming. We were just completely exhausted. My feet hurt incredibly bad. Um, but the best part uh, that kept me from not even thinking about my feet was all you folks that came by. So. Um, we had a great crew, uh, Doug with uh, the Okies, and had a, what is that big thing? Um, the 9541. 95 um, yep. Really the five color printer. Uh, Jeff was, of course, there. Crystal was there. Carlos, um, Claudia. Forrest. Forrest. Um, probably leaving off some people. Thank you. And we are going to be back. Um, on the road in Phoenix next week. Yep. Hard to believe. And looking forward to going to Phoenix. Um, I've not been to Phoenix um, in a while. So that will be next Friday and Saturday at the NBM show there. Jeff and I will be teaching our class. So if you're in the area, please come by and um, take our class. Um, everybody who attends the class gets a $25 coupon and we do have some great prizes. We give away an SG400 complete, uh, $250 credit, $100 credit, so some great prizes and hopefully the class is of value to you and we will try to do um, a live broadcast um, Friday or Saturday. We'll see how it goes. So um, great and Sprite, I think you have some some cutting edge information on open house. I, I do. Um, Would you like to share it with so, some people? Yeah. Well, I, I had to I had to think because we changed the date. Um, so yeah. So if you guys aren't familiar, we do an open house every year where we just kind of open our doors and we let people come in. Um, we do classes. We do demonstrations. We have vendors here, and so we've had our, our a couple of meetings and we have a date set and it is June fifteenth. It's Saturday, June fifteenth. That's from 10 to 3 here in beautiful, sunny, will be hot Mobile, Alabama. So really excited. I'm going to teach a class. Um, Rod, hopefully Pharrell will be back this year. He's going to teach a class. Um, we'll have uh, Unisub will be here. We're going to be demoing our big stuff. We're going to be demoing our, you know, the stuff you guys see us do every day. So, you know, it's going to be fun. And uh, Jimmy Lamb will likely be here from Sawgrass. Um, so... Just a host of great folks uh, teaching, and uh, there'll probably be a couple of, you know, maybe one more surprise class, and you know what I mean. Um, so we'll we'll just see how it goes. But um, if you're not familiar with this area, we're on the Gulf Coast. We're at the very bottom of Alabama. We're right. We're about an hour from Pensacola, Florida. We're about in New Orleans. So we're on the Gulf of Mexico. And so, great time to come down and maybe spend a day or so at the beach. Um, hopefully, pray everybody for great weather. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's very crowded. Um, and so, uh, hope you enjoy it. We will also feed you. And the food has has uh, traditionally been, been just superb. It's so, we good. bring in food trucks and we eat right outside on our port -a So, um, we'd love for you... And, and how much does it cost them to be part of our open house? 
Absolutely nothing. Absolutely, right. yeah. There, there's no problem. They get a little something for coming down, like a little bribe or something. We, we give them a little, like, little credit there. We like to give people things. Um, really and um, so, so really check it out. Um, and for folks who cannot attend our other little treat for you, and that is we're going to do our did last year, and we're going to stream the classes. So, Miss um, Sprite, we streamed her class, and I think Roger's class. Don't know about um, Jimmy Lamb's class. I, I, I can't remember. You, you walked around and, and live streamed. Um, so yeah, it's just we have a lot of fun here. We have a lot. It's uh, you know, it's like um, it's like the, like a candy store. It's like Disney World, but you know, you get to decorate stuff. So. Yeah. So the um, also the best part on uh, one of the best parts will be operating the candy kiosk. Uh, so, your photo, we'll immediately print it, and we will put it on a product. My my son generally operates the kiosk, so if you've ever been to a show and seen us do fun, um, and you, you best part is you walk away with a with, with a priceless keepsake, and it's funny to see people who are um, obviously seasoned sublimated, really good. They just love being part of the kiosk um, because once you drink the um, sublimation coffee, you get out of your system. So um, we hope that you can you can be part of that. A um, couple other things. Um, uh, one of the 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 show I mentioned, NBM, also puts out a A and E magazine. If you do a search, I'm sure you can find it think um, about polymer drinkware which is really cool and exciting something uh, really cutting edge and new and then um, I believe one of um, our our condi um, a marker article and so um, we're, we're of course in love with the markers here see it's hard to, for me to do this but um, uh, cool and then uh, my article is here, so I'll figure out a way to to get these to you. But uh, at any rate, I think it's a useful publication. Um, I think its description is is um, no charge. So uh, maybe we ought to, Crystal. Let's find a link that we can put up for people that wish to subscribe to A and E Magazine. Um, and of course, the best part, I think, of the uh, trade shows all around. They have a bunch. To trade almost um, too many, from, uh, and say you know just the very busy trade show shows. So well, we'll be going to some some really interesting, unusual cities that we haven't been to. I think we're going to them. That's Ooh. that's your. I don't think I think I've been maybe ever. So I'm looking forward to that. Be upgraded to a new version like version four. So um, but doing it that way. It integrates what we do directly into the color engine and that allows you to get the very best color um, as opposed to just simply being to driver. Now programs that don't have fancy car architectures like Corel and Adobe um, can't take full advantage of it but we can still apply our profile in the driver and get what I think is is the very best output you can from programs. So programs like Silhouette that have become very popular um, using our ICC profile, uh, we, can, we can set it up so that it is integrated into the driver and provides the, the very best output. Now the, the great folks at Sawgrass that of course make the printers and make the inks, they have um, a very intriguing and excellent architecture called VPM. And VPM certainly has its advantages, one of which is it is really a required uh, part of using Creative Studio. So it integrates with Creative Studio. Um, but the, um, the architecture of, of Spectra Fusion um, conforms to the, the, the color standards uh, of the CIE um, color engines by Adobe and Corel, and that provides you with integrated color 
And so um, the good news is both of them are are free. They're part of just simply buying a great printer like the SG400-800, um, and it's ultimately your choice. Um, but having done this essentially longer than pretty much anybody else, um, because most people are either, I guess, dead or retired, or they've moved on to a different job, um, we, we look at output all the time. Um, we judge output all the time. And I would tell you that the output that you can achieve um, with our profiles, with the SpectraFusion output, um, is, is just excellent. And you can you can it's you know you can prove it to yourself. You can look at the kind of grays that we get, like us that spend um, every waking moment uh, trying to solve a problem. And if we can fix a problem for the call that just came in. We're going to do our best to document it through our videos, um, through all our resources, um, so that we can help the next person. So um, the vertical banding in general, if your printer has a lot of age on it, I would clean the encoder strip, I would clean the belt, and I would, um, after I did those things, I would go through the, um, pay, uh, the print head uh, position alignments. Um, somebody asked about Linda. Okay, um, Linda Brooks is one of our um, fantastic sales reps. She's been here, um, I know, 20 plus years, and um, she um, had some uh, medical surgery, and um, we spoke to her, I think, yesterday, and she um, uh, was um, still in some discomfort, um, still very much out of it, um, and um, uh, so we'll, we'll continue to follow up and and find out how she's doing. Okay. Um, does SpectraFusion integrate with VPM? So SpectraFusion and VPM are, are different ways to solve the same problem. And so uh, Sawgrass, uh, the great folks at Sawgrass came up with VPM to be a general purpose solution essentially for any application that you print from where, where the SpectraFusion method was really focused first and foremost on um, the professional applications that you would find from Adobe and from Corel. And, um, and so by doing it the way we do it, you know, it literally integrates directly into the color engine of those applications. Um, we have been very successful with um, using the SpectraFusion um, strategy, if you will, um, and, and um, using it in the driver for applications like Silhouette. Um, so I had a question, Eddie, uh, he needs a source for high-res blank images of slates and other products. So um, we, are, we are working on that, um, on offering multiple images on our website, um, uh, but in the interim, does he have an option? Yes. Um, so one of the options would be to download our unbranded um, catalog that is uh, on our website. Um, it is devoid of us, and you could post it. You could open it in, in Corel. You really need Corel. It's a high-res PDF. And then what you would do is you would extract whatever content you want. You could personalize it with your name. You could print it do whatever the heck you want to do with it would be um, a, a quick strategy of, of getting images. Um, and so another uh, strategy for all, all you folks out there is our unbranded uh, website, which is? Easycustoms.com. Easycustoms.com. <laughs> and we got some final questions. Jeopardy questions here. So easycustoms.com. So, that is a flipbook based website. There is no way they could ever tie it back to us and you can link to it. Um, and so it would be an another strategy. There is also now a way for you, if you're participating in our client gallery, to through an easy customs link to show your, um, your images that are on the gallery. Really cool. And is that somewhere documented? Yes. Um, oh, I, you know, I had all that stuff printed out on how to do that. Um, 
Let's see. I think they can find it through their shopping cart, right? Well, so if you go into if you go into your account and you go onto the left um, hand side of the screen, um, can you pull up our website real quick and? Uh, so just to reiterate what so we're talking about, um, so we have a client gallery, and of all the features on our website, um, bar none, it is the best feature because it is coming from folks like you. It is your works of art, what you're doing, and the great honor for all of us is you are sharing um, what you're doing, and by sharing it, um, you're helping everybody grow and everybody do better. Well, as you put your images in, uh, we've created a, a really cool way that you can, um, without sending people to our website, which you generally wouldn't want to do, that you can simply display your your part of the client gallery without them ever knowing where it came from. Um, he needs blank images. But we'll, Crystal, if you will, after this, let's post it. Yeah, I've got so it. So that, as far as blank images, um, we are are um, working on that now. As far as uh, ensuring that we've got blank images of all our products, and we will get that done um, uh, in the near future. Yeah, sorry, Eddie. If you want to um, send me an email, wood at condi com with what you need, and we can we can yes, figure it out. Yes, wood. Yes, wood. I changed my email. Isn't that nice? Yes, wood. It reflects who I really am. Okay. All right. Questions, uh, Crystal? So far. We're good. Okay. Okay. Is uh, YouTube still going? It is. Excellent. No way. YouTube's up and running. Okay. So I had a. Um, let's let's get to the fun stuff. We're good. We're good. Okay. So I had a. I had a request that we have not done stacked metal and so I said okay well this is one of my most favorite things to do so we're gonna what do in the world is stacked metal you know what I had that big piece out in the lobby that I was gonna grab and I didn't grab it um well so metal is maybe go out there at crystal do you know what she's talking about? what does it look like it's up against the wall it's blue and then it has a, a, a you can't you can't miss it it's a big piece um so stacked metal is metal that is stacked. And so we're going to... One piece on top of each other. And I want to give um, credit to a young lady that lives in Fullerton, California. She is the proprietor of Fullerton Photo. And um, I give her credit with inventing the concept of, of stacked metal. Her name is Gabby Mullinex. And if you... Um, search uh, Condi TV for Fullerton. I think you would find it. So show us what stack metal is. All right. So I, I did this piece. This was actually like one of the first pieces that I did when I, I started working here. Fold and it forward there. Yeah. Um, there. Like there, there we go. So I don't know if you guys can see the depth in that. So this is um, a big piece of Benelux and then a, what do you think, like a 16 by 24 or something 16 by 24 piece of metal and I just took it and I made it like a frame so I took this nice um, this nice shaped piece on this nice square piece I don't know if you can see I have um, a little piece of wood there in the center actually a couple pieces of wood and so I'm going to show you guys how to do this today how to f uh, find uh, images that are good that are good for you know doing this type of thing how to um, it is, in general, there are no rules, right? It, it, well, you know, it's whatever you like to do. And, um, and so stack metal is one of those incredibly creative processes. And I've seen people do multiple stack metals. I've seen them stack them three times. I've seen um, uh, Sprite has her famous piece. Where's your famous piece of the little girl or whatever, oh, I guess? I gave that um, to you. Yeah. We're, we're going to... We're, 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 we're going gonna, above and okay, beyond today. Okay. But anyway, the, the point is that you can actually use dissimilar um, metals like clear, white, glossy, matte, and you can achieve um, amazingly um, cool creative effects. And uh, Pamela, what's the difference between Benelux and Chromalux? So Benelux is the shape of, of that particular piece. Chromalux is, is the manufacturer of the metal. So... Um, yeah, so a couple different. So so sorry that we got we could define everything and um, it, it you know go forever here uh, yeah. with all the words we use and I do apologize when we talk jargon and it sort of confuses people. But 
ultimately chromalux is is a technology of sublimation metal it is world famous it is a thick coating it yields incredibly clear deep rich colors so we're going to do three different styles, not really necessarily styles, maybe styles. We're going to do three different types of stack metal today. We're going to do kind of like a, just an art print. Um, we're going to do a photograph. Well, actually, we're going to do two art prints, but we're going to do one triple stacked of just the photograph. We're going to do one like this one that has a like a pattern background and then a photo in the center. And then we're going to do an actual photo. So, um, so we're going to talk about what makes a good image for a stacked photo. And um, so I, I brought a couple of examples that are not good for stacked photos. Um, so something like this, that's really busy. Um, this would be good for, you know, maybe the back, so the back panel. And then, you know, I don't have really any kind of crisp elements to take and, and, and pop out, you know, uh, and stack. So this is a, a, an example of something that you maybe would not want to stack unless you were doing it as a background image. Um, so in comparison, something like this, uh, which I thought I thought would be a good image to stack. So you're going to see we're going to do this one in a second. So I have a nice big background image, and then I have you know a little foreground image that I can just take and kind of stack that out. So the way that I determine what's going to be good and what's not going to be good is I put it in my design software and I draw some boxes. So I know I go to our Condi website, I use our drop menu and I see what size metal do we have. And then based on what we have, what we sell, what elements kind of fit in this photo. So I had this and it, you know, it, it kind of hung off the edge a little bit. I took an eight by 10 box put it in there, it fit great. I said, okay. And then I took a four by six box and, and this part fit great. And I said, okay, so that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, now, if you already have your metal, if you have you know a 12 by 12 and a five by seven, then you're gonna have to kind of find elements that fit into those dimensions. I have unlimited amounts of sizing and so it's, it's a lot easier. Um, let's talk about another one that is maybe not such a good one to stack. And that would be a, a photo like this, that is just a close up. Um, now, once again, you could do this as a foreground photo and do uh, you know, a nice pattern in the back, but you're not gonna be able to take you know, like her face and kind of pop it off of her body. I don't know if that would look well, that would look pretty good. Um, so we're gonna do three different examples today. And we're gonna start with one. I saw mom was watching. Hey mom, you, you know this one. So we're going to start with the one that I gave my nephew for Christmas. You have good eyes, by the way. Gosh, I just, you know, my eyes aren't quite that good. Um, we See, purchased Carmelux. Okay. You, can, you can read it. You little can read bit, it. A little bit. All right. So, um, so we're going to start with, this is a fun pattern. Uh, for some reason, my nephew, he's really big into pineapples. And so I, I picked up on that and I decided I was going to do this nice, like, pineapple art for him. He's 16. So I'm doing um, this pineapple background, and then I actually purchased this for him. This is like a pineapple skull. He's a pretty cool kid. Well, that's going to be cool. That's going to be cool. So we're going to do two different pieces of metal. This is our U4680. This is our 12 by 12 semi-gloss, and you can tell it's a semi-gloss because of the peel coat on it is orange. And then I so have it's a semi gloss. Semi gloss white. white. Sorry, semi -gloss yeah, semi gloss white. white. And then I also have a this is U4056. This is a 5x7 gloss clear. So we're going to use these two panels. The first thing I want to do when I do an image that's this big that has dry, take my peel coat off. And one of the ways that uh, kind of you get the peel coat started, just stick it under the heat and it'll kind of curl it back. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Let me peel it for you or you got it. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Okay. I got this. I got this part. So one of the fun things of, of doing stacked metal is you really, it, it's unlimited what you can do with mixing um, different finishes, uh, clear and white, and um, it allows you to highlight the foreground and push the background back, and it, it's just so amazing. I've seen people do, take a big piece and do multiple you know, second stack metals. Um, yes, Crystal? We have a question from Vince. He 
says anything on working on the Forever Flex software. Okay, software. we'll get that at the the end. And just uh, remember that, and Ben, we'll we'll talk a little bit about uh, my favorite non-sublimation product, which is the Forever Flex Off. Okay, my mic is flipping around. All right, so I've got a piece of butcher paper on the bottom, just protective paper. But could you combine Flex Off and what we're doing here? Probably. Um, well, you could probably do a, fore, a background flex off piece, but you know, again, it's uh, this is sort of an all sublimation kind of thing. Yeah, and you know, we tried with we the tried Chromalux, to do some. and because the Chromalux is so anti scratch, anti fade, anti graffiti, anti flame, the it just it would not would not stick to it. Yeah. Now we did have some some okay results with our our Dyna sub metal. Um, yeah. So. Uh, okay, so I've got my piece of, uh, of metal just taped on the top and the bottom there to my, my substrate. I'm sorry, my piece of metal is taped to my image. Oh, what's happening? All right, so we're going to do image face down, metal face up. And we're going to cover it with a piece of polypoplin fabric. So um, I've had quite a few conversations about the fabric lately, and I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is just about everything I've sublimated over the past four years. Um, so this is not going to transfer ink to your top platen. This is not going to transfer ink to your substrate. As long as your substrate is fully covered with a transfer, you're going to be great. So this is, um, you know. So it's, it's basically the metal is on the bottom face up, transfer is face down polypoplin on the top. Why do we use polypoplin? And we use it for moisture management. Let me close it. You got it? Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Well, let's... And so uh, what happens is moisture is coming off the coating that's on the metal and when it comes off um, the, the moisture of course turns into steam and when it turns into steam um, then, then it can um, it, it can destroy our sublimation. So, uh, as the piece gets bigger, more moisture is happening because there's more surface area, and it 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 is a serious issue to dealt with. And our solution from many years ago is to use fabric. Fabric, the polypoplin fabric acts as as an uncompressible vent. To allow that moisture to move away and um, regardless of how it works um, it works and if you don't do it um, then you're going to get um, spots of clumpy blurriness spotchiness in your metal and you're going to call us and you're going to be frustrated and we're going to tell you are you using fabric on top now when we do this we're not using cover paper the fabric is the only thing on top and um, we can do that and um, we t traditionally just remote in and um, remote into your computer and just add any custom paper sizes. Um, it's actually relatively easy if you're PC based. You simply go to your printer folder, go into, um, uh, for most printers, it's the printer properties and under the advanced uh, tab, you're going to see where you can add custom paper sizes. Um, but ultimately, because I'm sort of an anal engineer, I would prefer to do it for you instead of you sort of doing it right, getting frustrated, only finding out you didn't. Um, so we would we would prefer to do it for you. What is your opinion of the Epson C88 Plus? So the question is, um, Epson printers, so when we first got into sublimation 27 years ago, um, the printers of choice for sublimation were Epson cool. and the, whoa, isn't that nice? That is so That's, nice. Show that to I the um, so the printers the of choice were Epson printers, and the reason is, is Epson printers had a magic uh, feature called a piezo print head. Very nice. Uh, tilted a little forward. Yeah, there we go. Um, and so the the foreground image is obviously being predominant. Um, just yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so you have the. It's a, a, a gloss white on the top and then a, a gloss clear on the back. And you can see how that just really pops it out. So these were predominant and um, we sold them and supported them for many years. Ultimately, the great folks at Recom Company entered our, our market with 
out of the box, much more suitable for sublimation. And then ultimately those printers were designed, manufactured and warrantied and supported for sublimation. And so uh, Ridge, um, through the great folks at Sawgrass is the only, what I would call turnkey, out of the box, warrantied made in printer on the market. That said, that are successful using the F and that's great if you're successful then keep going the challenge with Epson is it's a can you add the components um, you have to management or vendor provides it um, most cases you've got to do the more challenge coach to my and and, um, and so when the Ricos came along, um, probably 14 or 15 years ago, um, they really were a game changer because they introduced the concept of turnkey. Um, and their speed, their quality, cartridge size, um, their, their economy were really the, the kind of things. And if um, you go to our website, you can probably see my older article scattered where I talk about these printers. So I know a lot of people use Epson printers. The was one of the very first printers that um, really stood the test of time. And it's amazing after all these years that the C88 is still made. And that's a tribute to uh, being a great printer. That said, its cartridges are very small. So if you buy C88, you're going to have to buy. Um, either refillable cartridges or you're going to have to buy a bulk ink system. And doing all those things um, is, is lowers the reliability of the system. Um, and so, you know, I'm of the camp that, that we're doing this to make money. And so, um, um, yes, you have to buy good equipment um, to, to uh, do that. Other people may be just playing or whatever, but for folks that are, are in it to, um, to make money, to feed their family, I would certainly recommend um, a, a turnkey solution like the SG400-800. You know, I'm, I'm sort of, a, having done this longer than one, I'm sort of a sublimation evangelist. I have to be able to make you money, and, um, and so, Said the best in substrates, the best in tech support, the best um, in, in heat presses systems. But ultimately, I'm happy to help with whatever your challenges are if I can. Um, but it certainly makes my job easy and our team easy. That's something that um, is is very much turnkey. What goes on at the open house? Ah. Good question. Um, Sprite was on at the open house. Oh, man. Uh, so we have classes. We have demonstrations. We have free stuff. We have chances to win. Um, we have David. And Sprite. We have our... The reps are, are all... But it is the open... To me, it's a way for you to touch, to talk. But I would tell you that... that there's really two great aspects. First is networking. So you get to network with, with other um, Condi clients, them, ask questions, ask them what's working um, because they're coming from all around in education. So you can, you can learn really smart folks like right from um, uh, General. Uh, you know, and so it's it's networking full um, the first time that they get to see a lot of products and um, so they can you know sort of understand what we're talking about because um, I know we're talking about metal and fit and all this. But uh, over the years, I first started in sublimation. Ooh, nice. Um, I wrote um, a bunch of tips, and you can find this somewhere on our website. It's called Road to Sub 101 Tips and Tricks for Sublimation Success. And my first tip 
I think is still for everybody, whether you're a beginner, whether you're an advanced uh, supplement document. So what I'd like to see tens out uh, the open handbook down. Um, there they have all their questions listed that they want to learn. Um, I can't promise, of course, that we're going to have the answers, but if we don't have the answer, we you may know someone who does. And see the the best way that you can you can learn any yeah, any trade um, is is by being a good student, and it really starts documenting your successes. Doctors like the uh, question custom. That's something you write down. Here's how we do this: the questions on the on the trays. What can I do with my bypass tray? Well, I can print longer, and on the 800, I can print. Um, you know, I'm getting. Um, and so what I tell people is the very first thing you should, when you get an error on your is to whip out your smartphone picture so, so that you have that error document. I can't tell you how many times someone will call me and say this error them what and they have just a vague memory of the error. Well as you can guess it's help help someone Mirror. So, doc, care of it. Um, and so, you know, you can ask questions. Can I sublimate to Corian? Do this or uh, about this product for? Um, so, all the questions and really our goal is to make you very successful so that you'll be in a position to get lots of stuff from us. So, we would like to be very successful at Condi. But the only successful at Condi here is All right. So real quick before we get into any more questions. What are you doing? This is a threesome. Wow. This is a, three, this is, this is a threesome. Um, I know this piece. We've done it before. Um, any more questions? Things. Let's give some stuff away. So I have, um, I have a review winner. My review winner this week is Brenda Neal. She uh, reviewed our Aero 1-6, that's our coaster, our coaster out beautiful. The colors are so vibrant, just incredible. These as they were a huge hit. So Brenda, thank you so much. You have $25 in Condi credit. Thank you, Brenda. Guys, go send me a review. I, I will pick one of you beautiful people and give you $25 next week. And the sandstone. Products we we, we after, um, and the um, if you haven't tried even for yourself, try the sandstone coast, the car coast uh, cup holder in your car. Just a, a great thing, you know. The ladies love it with uh, um, a pattern or a monogram. Fantastic product. Um, so we also have our weekly gallery contest winner. Um, and, uh, also, so let me talk about our monthly gallery contest. So our month this month is are you the best use of your um, show a themed item. Um, and so do that. Go to your client. Go to our client gallery. Upload your upload is your rates for a chance to win two hundred, one hundred, or fifty dollars in Condi credit. So beautiful, great prizes. All you have to do is go upload your images, and then you can use that. Catalog. Speaking of that, Nordic Creations, Caitlin McCann, she created this beautiful um, license tag. Words are, and she won our twenty-five dollar candy crate. Wow, so, that's beautiful. Yeah, Let's see. Let's see. really nice, like watercolor succulent design. It really is with a, a monogram on the front. So, so it's got here but almost a little aqua kind of theme yeah. but um just absolutely license right. plates are incredibly pop it's where there's there's um not one to you know can't put it on there 12 um kind of thing thing uh, just amazing work of art okay so we our, our theme for the past couple of weeks is we've been pressing things and and we've been giving you guys a, a chance to win the blanks of what I press. So we're going to do the same thing today. 
Uh, you can win the blanks of everything I pressed. That one, two, three, four mounting. Um, that is the the metal here, which is the 12 by 12, the 5 by 7, the 8 by 10, the 4 by 7. You guys haven't seen me do this yet, but I have a 4 by 4, 4, 12, and also, this is a 12 by 18, no, uh, 11 by 17, sorry. So, guys, let me know how much do you think it weighs. We can do ounces, we can do pounds. I've got it covered this week. In addition to that, so tell me how much you think it weighs. Who? First person that is closest. First per person that is closest. Go I over. First person that is less than. First, first person less. that is closest without going over. Going over. No, going over. Oh. Okay. So, um, and why you guys are guessing? So this is a three stack. Okay. This is one of the those images where I have a really nice, um, you know, a really nice. Can take that focal point. And I can knock it out. And then even more, I have on this photo that I can stack out. Let's make this one happen. All right. Um, the thing I want to do is apply my. And uh, she does such a great job. So good job, Sprite. Thanks. I just... And thanks, Miss Sprite, by the way, or Miss Mom Sprite. Hey, Mom. Yep. So. Yeah, all right, so I know I, you, I know you guys asked. Um, Do we have some viewers from outside looking in there? Well, we had one. And, uh, so uh, I think somebody asked about the paper that I, I use. I just use our, our, our SPP. Or, um, the only time I use the print is if we do it, if I do acrylic. Um, but, you know, that's. Yeah, so there's. Uh, um, prefer for the desktop. One's called the die trans SVP paper, and there there is a version printers that's called XP. So text print XP, and um, I prefer the die trans paper for the the unit substrate. Print our paper for um, for glass for for um, off substrates, and so this is between the papers is, is great. But um, since you know we're sensitive and somewhat perfectionist, you know we paper, and so uh, um, our instructions will indicate which which paper we prefer I wish we were so like she's putting that two, cool. um, two books on the um, on the metal here and um, so this is the hardest part is trying to um, oops Okay, here we go. So she's doing the first layer um, for the box on the back. Um, so one we... tape, the other side, you're going to put tape. We do E6000 uh, to be used with the tape um, just to ensure that many get a little bit of abuse. But, all right, and right, uh. So you guys keep those guesses coming in YouTube. You know we um we'll figure it out. I'm almost done. We'll figure it out after the broadcast. Yeah, the you broadcast. Folks, you folks don't know already. Oh or? yeah, we know. You, you know. Yeah, we know. It's just really hope everybody of all that's all the in there because are you guys showing up to view Facebook and on YouTube? And I'm really thank you so much. The problem is, is during the live feed, we can't scroll back oh, up. Oh, sure, sure. Tape is what it's double-sided. Yeah, what I would refer to is, it's yeah. um, so it's actually quite strong and 
quite sticky. Yeah. The only reason I'm not using the E6000, the only reason I'm using this slide. carpet tape is because I want to show it done. Um, if I did the, you have to let it sit and let it let it cure. So. And again, if your big pieces, let's say you're getting a from our fulfillment bill and our, our our fulfillment services, it will go up to the pieces of metal, very large. And um, you know, you 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 absolutely need hundred percent clear um, about about how to mount large pieces, smaller piece of metal. Oh gosh, that looks so good. See finishes. This is a cool one. So this is kind of like an old favorite that I keep revisiting. Just you imagine because... that sitting in an art gallery. Man. Um, Nope. How much you think that that would sell for? Off the top of my head, three hundred dollars. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. So to give it a little more added weight, I have um, the two blocks that I'm going to put on the back, and then the two the two. One that you'd probably put two mounts exactly. back, exactly. just to ensure that that. Yeah. By the way, yeah, you see the accolade oh, uh, nice. for you. That's, that's awesome. Thanks. So again, and the, the wow, uh, going that's a back, a lot of guesses. Yeah. To the map, we have multiple systems depending on weight slash size of the metal, and so um, definitely don't guess. Learn our mounting blocks. We have the metal cleats, um, and then large. But you could do the the framing system even on. Uh, uh, and um, that also the the bars. If you watch my video on on um, type maybe or whatever, do a circumlux map. See the the frame system and they're also in metal from flexing as it on, as it's on the wall um, because it's it is a big piece. Yep. All right, I'm almost there. Uh all right, so so again, the bottom pieces are intended to keep it from you know, tilting as it's on the wall. So they're so there you go. And the, so this um, and I really should have measured it. I'm sorry. Um, so this is uh, you know, you would hang it with two little nails and just kind of slide it over. This is the pretty good weight to it. I'm not gonna have to tell me how much weight. Um, so yeah. So guys, let me know. You can win all this stuff. The, of course, you don't. The items are are all going to be blank, but yeah. And then um, Snowflake Girl as well. She looks really, really good. You got to zoom out. Okay, I will <laughs> zoom out. There we go. Sweet. Look who it is. Okay, so that's all I got today, guys. And um, we're gonna get we're, we'll get back to you, and we'll let you know who won. Final questions, Miss um, uh, Crystal. Nope. Well, we. Well, we appreciate all your participation, and we thank you for su asking such uh, You folks are, are absolutely awesome. We look forward to servicing you, serving you, and helping you grow your business. Um, this has been David Grove. Everybody, we thank you for such a great Thank you, Chris, behind the camera. Until uh, we meet again, we'll be at the...